Well, good morning, everyone. This is a good way to start off the day. I don't have the camera. Yeah, the camera's picking it up there. Everything is iced over here in Pennsylvania. It is the uh, the 4th of January. We got some freezing rain yesterday. Mixed with some snow, mixed with some sleet, and uh, quite frankly, I didn't even leave the house. So, I'm letting the windshield thaw out right now. I got my lights off because they shine right into a house across the road from where I parked my truck. So, we'll let this thaw out, and then uh, we'll get, we got a busy day ahead of us. Man, everything out here is absolutely frozen. It's worse here than it is at my house. I mean, this, I don't know if you can see the shine across the parking lot here in this frame. But it's like a just a thin layer of ice on the asphalt here. Like the, my truck was even making tracks where it was there. You can see them there through the ice. All my straps are like frozen solid. They were frozen to the tires. <laughs> I had to yank them off of there so i gotta get my ramps out but i'm letting this thing warm up some so i can at least see to see to get out of it this is a uh 2018 2019 volvo s90 i think this is the i don't know some special model it's pretty nice inside and i showed you a little bit on the last video but if you didn't watch that one then you're just seeing this one nice car not really a car guy but or not this kind of car guy but all right let's let this thing warm up and uh hopefully we don't slip and fall in this parking lot because you can see it there look at that beautiful morning though about 24 degrees man everything is covered in salt so we're in my actually in my hometown. I'm getting fuel now. 269 a gallon, which isn't bad. I gotta go back into PA, so I'm getting fuel cheap while I can. Um, so I got a lot of maintenance to do on this truck. I've got oil change and filter. I gotta do the transmission, uh, fluid change and filter. Uh, I've gotta do the rear end. And I'm going to try to use a friction modifier this time because it does still have a binding in the rear end. My old Ram did it, put friction modifier in it, and it was fine. This one's having the same issue. Rear end's binding on a tight turn. Um, so that'll be the second oil change in the rear end. And then I got to do fuel filters and tires. I'm going to probably, the tires on the front are still good, so I'm probably just going to put... Um, in a week or two probably put uh four drives on it i don't like doing that but the front tires are like half treads so i don't really feel like um replacing those the inner the inner ones back here are wearing quicker and i thought i'd get more mileage out of these tires i got about maybe forty thousand out of them uh I've contemplated going 19.5s, but I just don't really want to spend $3,800 right now, so. I might do it. I don't know. I almost did it last night. I got bored in bed and I almost spent $3,800 on them. Uh, but let's get fuel. Let's get back on the road. In a sea of sprinters, we got to find ours. Uh, I hear uh, these might be 170 wheel bases. Pick up a 140. I hear it down here. So does this four-wheel drive on? I think this one's four-wheel drive. This first one on the end here, as high as it sits. Hey, it's cold out here. Let's see. Oh, uh, we got the end one. Uh, may not be. Just a little sprinter. Let's see. 144 wheelbase it's a dealer trade so we're gonna take this one and we bring back a 170 which is one of those over there longer wheelbase all right let's get this pulled over all right so here's a good tip for these uh for these sprinter vans make sure you uh take a picture of the roof um 
you're doing like a dealer trade or something like that and it's a brand new sprinter you see a lot of sprinter vans roof with people putting them on uh like big car carriers and like bringing a deck down or something on top usually not a high roof but a standard roof um you'll get one or they'll you know go under something and hit the roof so always check the roof and take a picture climb up on the back step back there and just hold your phone up and take a couple pictures of the roof of the sprinters Well, there she is all strapped down so let's talk right on this one this is 350 bucks on 100 miles and it's a dealer trade so i get another 350 bucks on 100 miles to come back so 700 on 200 miles is pretty good uh for something like this they needed it today um but i have other cars to go with it down where i'm dropping this off so i'm trying to put a puzzle together of vehicles for the rest of the week i have a couple to pick up that don't need to be dropped off until sometime this week they just need to be picked up and taken out of the auction so pretty good pretty good start to the day i booked this on uh i booked this on either friday or saturday and uh, they needed it done today and i happened to be 11 miles down the road to dr dropping off this morning so this was perfect zero deadhead I mean, if you consider 11 miles deadhead, then whatever. But let's go get this delivered. And So we're in Bethesda, Maryland. If you know anything about Bethesda, Maryland, it is a city with a bunch of rich people. Like, look at some of these houses. You see them? Ridiculous. I don't like coming to places like this because most of the time there is nowhere to load and unload safely. Like they build these dealerships in places where trucks can't even get into so how do you expect you know vehicles to be delivered but i looked on google maps and i can't really tell what the best location is for me so we're just going to play this one you know as we pull up we got half a mile to the dealership and we'll see because we're going to take some time because we're going to unload and then reload so it's going to take a little bit of time to do this the swap so i don't really want to be blocking the road or be in a sketchy location that I don't feel safe loading and unloading a vehicle. Well, we found a not empty parking lot, but a parking lot nonetheless. There's a dealer right over there, so we're gonna take up some spots here and get this unloaded and get the other one loaded back up. Hopefully, try not to get yelled at, but we are in the city, so we'll probably get yelled at by somebody. Another day in the life, eh? thought it'd be easy dropping one off and picking one up so i uh drop one off and go to pick up the dealer trade you know you drop one you pick one they're trading vehicles and they don't have the one that i'm there for so i'm in bethesda maryland like i talked about i'm in that parking lot and the lady's like you can't park there they'll tell you i'm like well the store's closed and there's nowhere else to park right here without blocking the road I'm like, I don't really want to block the road here if I'm just standing around waiting. Like, I'll go wait with my truck. It was in a shopping center, so I went and bought something from the shopping center, you know, being like a good customer. Uh, and just waited around, and it's been 30 minutes since I talked to those the original person from this brokerage about what's going on. And I called twice, and I'm like, hey, like, like we need to either, you know, cancel this load while you guys figure it out. I can't just sit here and wait. Like... I'm not sitting around waiting for a half hour anywhere, but I'm not going to sit around and wait for a half hour when I'm, you know, potentially going to get towed. There's nowhere to park. I'm going to get blocked in. So, man, would have been a sweet load, but the return load paid what it cost to come down here. Now I'm going 29, can you see that? Yeah, 29 miles to a pickup where I already have three cars waiting for me. So, no harm, no foul, really. It's just like, 
sometimes with central dispatch you feel like people are doing whatever they can to not get a negative rating and I'm not there to give you a negative rating I'm just there to move on so I left we'll see when they hear back from them like I can still get the car tomorrow probably but you know it's gonna be a day like I need to confirm that the vehicle is actually there because they don't even have the VIN number I had so probably take them a while to get it figured out you know how it is trying to call a dealership and getting someone on the phone it's near impossible so we are off to Mannheim Baltimore so we got it sorted out it's crazy what one number and the VIN number can do and how much chaos it can cause so they had the one of the numbers wrong in the VIN number but that makes common sense that you know hey maybe these we don't have any other VIN numbers close to this it should be that vehicle but without a release form I can't get that vehicle picked up so they wouldn't release it to me so like I said I told the lady I pulled out of the lot she just called me back I said hey I already pulled out of the lot like I had to move can I do it like can it be done tomorrow so I gotta come back down here anyways tomorrow with an open spot so we'll just get it then uh, you know no harm no foul really on that one because we had to be down here anyways and now I got these three to pick up out of Baltimore um, Mannheim Baltimore that go back out to Ohio and uh, we're just gonna take them back to the house drop them at the house and then we'll probably take those out on Wednesday because I'm waiting on a confirmation on Wednesday to bounce like maybe to Iowa for a customer so that's all up in the air but I don't want to run out to Ohio tomorrow with these three and then on Wednesday they're like hey that vehicle in Ohio or Iowa's ready so I gotta go back out to Iowa I don't want to do that so I'd rather make it a smooth like two day two and a half day trip and uh, get out to Iowa and get back but with that being said well, let's go get three picked up it's been a heck of a day already but it was a good day it was a real good day it's just uh, frustrating when one number causes so much chaos. Oh, that looks safe. That's not illegal or anything. Jesus. Oh, first one up. Mini Cooper that looks like it's been sitting under a tree for quite a while. big dent here in the door we'll pull it out and get get some good pictures of it all right seconds this little dodge dart when they have two to pull out one's already out switch things around on me <sighs> he had two pulled out but i think he had another transporter grab the one but these are right across from the from the truck lot oh great Oh, shoo! Found the key. Anyways, these are right across from the truck lot, so it's not really a really far walk. <laughs> So now I just get to unload these, park them down in my driveway because they don't get delivered till Wednesday, but they needed to get out of the auction because they were, he was kind enough to pull the Patriot out, but after 48 hours, I tow it. So I told him I'd at least get them picked up, but I couldn't get them delivered till Wednesday. So that'll probably do it for today, guys. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for joining that adventure. That was uh, 
little chaotic with uh, not being able to get that one picked up, but stay tuned for tomorrow. Try to do daily vlogs, five a week, at least one each weekday, and uh, keep you guys entertained out here.